Uh, hello, everyone. Um, it's difficult to go to these talks the last day after our lunch, so I was thinking of not coming, so <laughs> I'm very glad you did. All right, so, but it's going to be fun. I'm, um, I want to talk about trains, uh, which is uh, entertaining for me because my, my dad was a train driver and uh, all my family has been in trains. And now they're kind of pissed that I say that I am a, a train person. <laughs> they're like, you are not a train person. You're a computer person. Okay, so my company, I work in waterfall security. If you don't know us, uh, yeah, we do unidirectional gateways. Um, and we are basically deployed in every critical infrastructure that you can imagine. Oil and gas and uh, energy. And now, more and more in rail and in air. So let's start with hotels. It's not, uh, I will explain why I start with hotels. Um, anybody know what, uh, what this hotel is? Or city? What city is that? Dubai? Uh, close, but not that close. <laughs> this city is Shenzhen. It's in China. It's the Silicon Valley of China. This uh, building right there is the KK100 building. It's the most famous building in Shenzhen. And in the to tw tw top 20 floors that you see there um, is a hotel, a beautiful hotel, the San Regis. It's an amazing hotel. Actually, have you been in the pool here at this hotel? This is really nice. That pool there was intense. <laughs> it was incredible. Like imagine being in a pool in the 92nd floor, um, like floor to windows. It's amazing. But anyway, so I was in this hotel as a guest uh, four years ago, and um, um, long story short, after three days, I was able to control every room at that hotel. When I mean I was able to control every room at that hotel, I mean I was able to control every appliance of every room at that hotel. I was able to open every blind I wanted in the hotel, switch the TV of any room at any channel I wanted remotely, I did that by abusing an industrial protocol. And we have another speaker here, which in the other next talk is going to talk about it. Interestingly enough, you know, that was an interesting coincidence. But uh, I did that abusing an industrial protocol called KNX. Now, why I'm starting with this, apart from the fact that I want to look cool in front of you, I do it because I see the same things in trains that I saw in that hotel then. I see a system that was not connected before and suddenly needed to be connected because of business reasons very fast. I see a system with many subsystems that is almost impossible to protect. The difference is the maximum damage I can do with this hotel is raising the temperature like at 100 degrees in every room. It's kind of annoying or raising all the blinds or putting all the TVs at one channel at the same time, it's kind of cool. I didn't do it, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, but a train is no joke, you know? A train is something that can be much more dangerous to take over. Now, I've been working in rail now for a while, and uh, we have done a lot of work with um, equipment at the stations, such as escalators, and we're already protecting the CTC, the train control center, uh, by you know, allowing the control center to send messages and uh, asset mass mass management, and now more and more we're trying to work with uh, onboard trains, actually inside the train, trying to protect the train itself. And today I'm going to talk about why we try to protect the train itself and how does it look at train from inside. So, trains. Um, you all have been a train, and if not, you still go, it's really fun. <laughs> it's like a very good experience. But nothing exemplifies Every industrial revolution, the four of them, like a train. When you think of the first industrial revolution, what do you think about? You think the steam engine, right? The, the westerns, the guys with the cowboys, you know? And like, the second industrial revolution, what do you think about? Is like these diesel engines, you know? Like these big trains, you know? Like getting a lot of power there. The third revolution, Maybe you don't think in a train, but you see all these trains that now can open doors automatically. They see the, the next station uh, appearing. You know that there is a lot of compute already in the train because these are computers managing all these different uh, systems. And finally, now is the fourth industrial revolution. And then maybe you don't think of a train, but for trains, it's very important to join that revolution. Why? Trains cannot make any more rails. 
They cannot start like building another rail next to the next one. What is the only way you can put more passengers? And they're increasing at the rate of like 15% every five years or something like that. How you can put all these passengers using the same rails and using trains is to increase the capacity, meaning that every train needs to be closer to the train before. They have to run very, very close together. The only way to do that without having collisions is how? Is trains have to be connected to each other. Trains have to report the status all the time. Not only that, trains cannot be down for a long time. They cannot be like in downtime. How do you avoid that? Doing predictive maintenance, getting information about the sensors of the trains. Trains are very connected. And I will explain now for example, one example of like what is is this works. Okay. So how, how many people know positive train control? You? Perfect. You want to explain? <laughs> like, positive control is something that needs to be deployed in every train in the US by the end of this year, period. That's what the government has stated. And they started this because there was a collision in 2008 uh, in California. People died, and Congress went to technical people and said, can we have avoided that collision? And they said, actually, yeah. There is this system called positive train control that allows you to break the train if a train is close enough. How do you do that? You send information from the waste state server about the status of other trains to the locomotive. And the locomotive, in turn, send information about the current status. It's a quite complex system. But what you see there is that the train is receiving information about the waste state server. And the first thing you think about is that how do you receive that information? Actually, they use a spectrum that they have to license and they send it that uh, a, a, a license spectrum to the locomotive. But this is a very complex system. And one thing I know is I have gone to many conferences of, of rail, and the first thing I ask is to the people implementing this system, have you put any cybersecurity or take cybersecurity into consideration? And the answer I said is like, are you kidding? <laughs> we don't even have time to go to the bathroom. Do you think like we're going to have time to put cybersecurity? Second question I ask, do you think your system is more prone to attacks now than it was before? I was like, of course. Safety was the consideration here, but never cybersecurity. So technically, you can send any message, because these messages are unauthenticated. You can send any message as long as you know the bandwidth, that the, 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 the frequency we're sending. And it's quite easy, because everybody knows about it. Now, let's go to the train kill chain, right? You know, you have seen this figure. Now I added a locomotive at the end. It's just the same thing. If you ask me how much, Jesus, you have hacked before a, a, a hotel, you know? How much will take you and money you will take to hack a train? Obviously, I will never answer this question because I have ethics, you know? And, and I am not the person that, that will try to think about how to possibly damage lives and things like that. But, you know, you can see that like the lower you are in the stack, you know, the closer you are to the train, the easier it is. So let's assume for a second here that we are, um, you know, like closer to the train. And let's, uh, well, I will not answer the question. I have this evil twin in another dimension, it's called like, evil Jesus, which uh, he likes a Snapchat, he likes drinking. Well, I like drinking too, but uh, he likes drinking more than me. So what will evil Jesus do, right? What will he do in order to hack a train? So first, you will see like how many, we'll see wh what are the networks in a train? How many networks exist already in a train? There are like three main networks with different risks. And the three networks are the train control network, the train operator network, and the passenger network. This is three, like, uh, the train control network is the crown jewels of the train. They are the brakes, these are the, the power supply, the drive, all these things that if they are hacked, you can do real damage. They are PLCs, a true industrial control system, like with the, the, the people, the, the usual suspects, like Siemens, etc., involved. The train operator network is where all the computers of the train are, where all the different cameras you see and all these passenger information systems, everything there is in the train operator network. And of course, because of things like PTC and because of, you know, like, uh, 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 these computers need to talk with, at some points, with the train control system. Uh, they are connected, so you see the number one there. The train operator network also needs to talk with the back office, the same thing. PTC, you need to exchange information between these. 
This link, the three link, it's usually a link that is dedicated for certain systems. They are safety critical links, so you cannot use to send anything you want. You cannot use that link to start sending information about the sensors or predictive maintenance. You need to do that through another link, usually the number four there. Then you have the passenger network or a network outside that connects through normal Wi-Fi or something like that. This network obviously is anybody can connect and you know it may be connected and in another a lot of cases number two there it's actually a connection between the computing capacity and the infotainment. Now obviously if you're inside the train you can go and attack directly the train control system but usually you have to use number three and number four. So a method would be like to find number three and number four and try to enter the system. Now what do we do? After we're in the train What's, what's the next step, right? You know, like we are in one of these networks. And the first thing that this evil Jesus will ask is that, what kind of train do you want me to hack? Do you want me to hack that train right there? 10 trains, 100 trains, all trains in the world? Depends on what type of train you want me to hack, that would be more difficult or more easy. Just because one of the things I have like here, and I have talked with a lot of people in uh, the space is, there is so many different train configurations. Trains right now have like any uh, train, um, train operator has maybe like 20 trains with 20, 20 different configurations in, er in different trains. That is very interesting for the perspective of the defender because when you are, it's the same thing as in uh, control systems in, in manufacturing. When you go inside a train, you don't know what to do. They, the attacker doesn't know what to do. But also, it's very difficult for the defender perspective because they have 20 different configurations with all these hundreds of trains running, which are actual networks where they have to protect. So anything, anyway, like what you will have to pick is, and the second thing I will ask is like, what do you want me to do in the train? Do you want me to open the doors? That seems quite simple. I guess, you know, I, get, I will get a computer, take control of the computer and open the doors. Do you want me to break the train? That's very easy too. Actually, it's way easier than you would think because I will just take control of the, the positive string control system. I will DOS it. I will send a false alarm and the train will break. I'm quite certain I can do it. And you want me to speed up the train? That's difficult because then I have to take down first all the safety systems in the train. I mean, it's possible, but it will cost you more money. <laughs> I mean, it, it will be more complicated. But what I want to th you to think about this is that this is an actual network made of different subsystems. And what you only have to do is to understand the configuration of the train and what's been exchanged. After that, things are quite simple. Now, how simple? That simple. <laughs> like, you see, train networks are incredibly complex. More complex than we will think. Like it's uh, when I started like reading and understanding and learning, I read all these dissertations about you know threat analysis of trains. One of these uh, I took this figure from. You will see that there is like so many subsystems, and in the past these subsystems were um, connected by buses, and these buses were complicated buses which like they have their own protocols, and it was complicated. You know it is like I/O, but more and more trains are moving to just be plain Ethernet and IP over Ethernet. What you're seeing there in at that train, for example, is connected th through Ethernet. It's a, a special type of Ethernet. It's called the Ethernet train bus, ETB, and has some interesting features, such as, for example, has a special way of DNS. So when you change the configuration of a train, if you put a wagon before that, they will know where this specific system exists, you know, so you didn't have to do like, you don't have hard configuration like IP addresses. But what is interesting is most of the information in this Ethernet train bus is sent through multicast. Remember that hotel I was telling you about using KNX to send information? Well, it's really, really similar of what things are going through here and what was going on in this hotel. There is no authentication. There is almost no firewalling. They say there's firewalling, but this is in the computer environment itself, and it's software firewalling. All these systems are connected. So if I take control of the information system or the entertainment system, imagine I'm able to take control of the computer that has the entertainment system. 
Now, it really depends on the configuration of the train if I'm going to be able to send multicast messages to the door control unit. Really depends on the train. But trust me, there are trains that you can actually do that. You can actually escalate the attack in a way where you can start getting control of different systems. It's difficult because all these different subsystems have the exchange messages is proprietary. You don't know how the exchange messages is kind of hidden. You actually need to go to a train or know somebody that knows what kind of messages are exchanged. So obviously, it requires a lot of legwork. So it's expensive. If you want to hire me to do that, you will have to take time, understanding, reading the manuals, etc. But I want to make you understand is that there is obviously a path through all these systems that is quite clear. Once these systems get more connected, and then you're connected through like links that are unauthenticated, and then you're connected through entertainment systems that are set very fast in order to have people happy. So like, oh, now we have Wi-Fi in the train. And you're like, oh, that's so nice. But somebody else there is like, oh, that is so nice. <laughs> like, I, now I can do something else, right? Now I can do it from outside you know, and just put a link an antenna. Now, I have studied this quite a bit and like, have the trace assessments of all the different, uh, uh, all the different um, uh, systems. And I won't go through this um, conversation right now of like, you know, how to hack a train or, or anything. But what I want you to come out of this talk with is that first, depends on the configuration of the train, of the difficulty of like, how to do this. Because of these trains are increasingly connected, things are getting easier and easier for the attacker and more difficult for the defender. And the third and most important is like defenders are doing nothing right now. Because trains, and I will tell you the problem now moving away from the offensive, and now nice Jesus comes into picture, which is like a great person. So what is the challenge of protecting these systems? Why things are not being done right now? First, the train control is a critical network. And uh, you, know, you need the highest level of security required. That means that you have to, you cannot just add some software there that tries to do stuff, you know? When you have to do it, you have to actually do it. There is a lot of lack of space in, in, a, in a train. When I talk with the different parties involved on in trying to uh, add uh, some security devices there, the first thing they saw, tell me is like, how small is your device? Where are we going to put it? It is, it is complicated. They have very limited space. Third thing is regulations and standards. Whatever you put in the train needs to be following safety standards and vibration standards. So it has to be a very, very specific hardware. So it's complicated to create new hardware for these trains. It has to be unmanned, meaning that you cannot be having a guy there trying to reconfigure the train all the time just because there is no guy there to reconfigure the train. So somehow things have to work this way. And most importantly, and what uh, the, 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 the bottleneck that uh, I experience with a lot of uh, these vendors is that the configuration of each train is different. So you have to have some kind of solution that is able to, like, you know, to scale to trains that are, have configurations that are wildly different. And finally, like they, these guys work with protocols that are very complicated to understand. And if you put a, try to put a firewall, uh, like IT firewall, it's not going to work. The same way that it's not going to work if you use a control system. It is very complicated to uh, set up a firewall style thing for a train. That's because it's just, there is so many ports, so many things open, so, so many different protocols that is not going to work. Now, what we can come up when we discuss with, with, uh, with partners on how to do that is just to, rather than let anything flow everywhere, is to send only information one way or like with links which are very specific, you know, between the computing capacity and the infotainment. For example, as I said, if I get a hold of the infotainment, which is the Wi-Fi, and I'm able to escalate to the computing capacity, then the train is fried, you know? It's really easy. But most trains need to use that link right there, up there, the internet service, in order to send things like predictive maintenance. Because as I said before, they cannot use the back office link because this is a safety uh, regulated link. They can only send a specific information about safety stuff of the train. So what we have come up is like, with like the perimeter defense is that you can send information from the computing capacity to the infotainment through like a unidirectional gateway, but you cannot send information back. You know? So infotainment cannot go and access the computing capacity, but you can still send information from the computing capacity to the infotainment. And similar is like computing capacity to train control. It's obvious that the computing capacity needs to send control commands to the train control, but it will be only be able to send these types of commands. You can save from the train control as much information as you want, terabytes of data. And it's important because you have all these sensors in train control. 
So you can have a link that is direct link, you know, you can send all the information. But when you want to come back from the computing capacity to train control, you do it through a specific link, you know, another unidirectional gateway that only allows control data to be sent from computing capacity to train control. That way you reduce the amount of data that somebody can send from the computing capacity, buffer overflows, like any kind of, of, of threat vector you know, that you can imagine or, or flow that you can see in the PLCs, you prevent them to send this kind of information to the train control. So basically, you reduce quite a bit the possible damage that can be done more if for people that get a hold of the, 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 the infotainment, for example. So that is a possible solution. There is more. I have discussed a lot of different solutions, how to do that. But again, something needs to be done. Like, it is obvious that right now, trains are very unprotected. To end up, you know, what I want to see is like, we are seeing in rail a lot of attacks. We know already that rail and signal networks have been hacked. We know that for sure. We know that now they have a link to, 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 to pivot from the signaling network into the train. The problem is that for attack, from an attacker perspective is that once you pivot inside the train, right now it's really difficult for them to know what to do. You know, these protocols are old, they have to get a lot of legwork, but things will get smarter and trains are something that is, again, very important to protect because there is lives involved. IT class security is not a solution and uh, adding more information to these computers that use Linux boxes inside the train it's only making the problem worse. It means that like, there is more programs, more software in these computers and um, they, have, they open more uh, the, oh, the door to, to attacks. And hardware segmentation, which is what I discussed, is one of the ways to reduce that, you know, that, that reduce this importance of the attacks. And I want to go back to that hotel and I said, I was kidding about obviously this, uh, how much money it will take, but right now hacking a train is definitely possible. There is no question somebody can do it. Now, to what extent or what kind of damage they can do, that really depends on their expertise and how much money they want to use. But, you know, as I explained here, you know, the, 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 the internal networks of a train, they are no different of like an ICS normal network. And actually, right now, they are even less protected because there is ever even less eyes on them. So, thank you very much.